Let's talk a little more about the all-important carbonyl group, a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom. All four atoms, the carbonyl oxygen, the carbonyl carbon, and the two groups attached to that carbon lie in the same plane. Between the carbon and the oxygen, there is a sigma bond localized between the two atoms, and a pi bond which is localized above and below the plane of the carbon and the oxygen. There are also two non-bonding electron pairs on the oxygen. The pi bond is weaker than the sigma bond due to the less efficient orbital overlap between the two atomic p orbitals. Both atoms in the carbonyl group are sp2 hybridized, so the bond angles around the carbon are close to 120 degrees. Note from the start that the carbon and the oxygen are not equal partners in this bond. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and it also carries those two lone pairs. As a result, the carbon-oxygen double bond is polarized, with a partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge at the carbon. This polarization is key to how the carbonyl group will react. Nucleophiles react with the positively polarized carbon, while the oxygen end reacts with electrophiles, most commonly a proton H+, and sometimes Lewis acids. So let's talk about reactivity and start with the simplest of carbonyl compounds, aldehydes and ketones, in which the carbonyl carbon is attached only to hydrogen or other carbon atoms, as in benzaldehyde, ethanol and butanone shown here. With these compounds, nucleophilic attack disrupts and usually destroys the carbon-oxygen pi bond. As the nucleophile arrives, it approaches the positively polarized carbon atom of the carbonyl group and sends electrons into the pi star anti-bonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. This weakens and ultimately breaks that pi bond, which we can show using curly arrows in this fashion. The species formed has a negative charge on the oxygen and is called an alkoxide anion. Protonation of the alkoxide is readily achieved in a subsequent step, which is usually aqueous workup, that is, washing with dilute acid solution at the end of the reaction. So reaction with a hydride reagent, like sodium borohydride or lithium aluminium hydride, which deliver nucleophilic hydrogen, the equivalent of H-, proceed as follows. Attack of that hydride nucleophile at the carbonyl carbon, weakening and breaking the pi bond. The electrons move on to the oxygen to give an alkoxide intermediate, which is then protonated during the workup. This can convert a ketone to a secondary alcohol, as shown here, or an aldehyde to a primary alcohol. In this transformation, the hydrogen content of the molecule is increased, so the carbonyl compound has been reduced overall. A second important class of nucleophile which commonly reacts with aldehydes and ketones are Grignard reagents, named after the French chemist Victor Grignard who first discovered them more than 100 years ago. These reagents are carbon-magnesium species and are made by combining an alkyl halide with magnesium metal and dry ether as the solvent. Once the Grignard reagent is generated, it is polarized such that there is positive charge density on the magnesium and negative charge density on the carbon. So it reacts as the equivalent of C-, a very reactive nucleophile centered on the carbon. Grignard reagents can be made from a wide variety of alkyl and aryl halides, and there are related organolithium, organozinc, and organocopper compounds which follow a similar mode of reactivity. Grignard reagents will add to aldehydes and ketones following the standard two-step nucleophilic addition reaction we've been talking about. The nucleophile attacks at carbon, breaking the carbon-oxygen pi bond, and sending those electrons up onto the oxygen. This forms an alkoxide intermediate in which the oxygen associates with magnesium, which can be protonated during aqueous workup to form an alcohol product. Starting with a ketone as shown here, forms a tertiary alcohol if our reagent had been an aldehyde 
the product would be a secondary alcohol. Grignard reagents will also react with carbon dioxide in a similar fashion. Nucleophilic attack of the carbon-centered nucleophile at the carbonyl carbon. Only this time, the end product is a carboxylic acid by virtue of the extra oxygen that's present in the carbonyl starting material. These reactions we've been looking at of aldehydes and ketones with hydride reducing agents and Grignard reagents are addition reactions overall. Addition of the nucleophile in the first step and then a proton in the second. Now let's make things a little more complicated and consider carbonyl containing compounds with additional heteroatoms also attached to the carbonyl carbon. Important compounds of this type include carboxylic acids, esters, amides, acid chlorides, and acid anhydrides. The fundamental difference between these guys and the simple aldehydes and ketones is the presence of a potential leaving group on the carbonyl carbon. So when these compounds react with nucleophiles, a different mode of reactivity is possible. Let's consider the reaction of ethanoal chloride with hydroxide. Hydroxide is a nucleophile and attacks the carbonyl carbon, as we've seen before. This sends the electrons up onto the carbonyl oxygen to give an alkoxide-like species. In this context, the alkoxide-like species is often referred to as the tetrahedral intermediate because we've gone from sp2 trigonal system in the starting material to sp3 hybridization at that central carbon atom in this intermediate. Now, in contrast to the reaction of an aldehyde or ketone, the tetrahedral intermediate has a different pathway open to it. It can reform the carbonyl system, expelling chloride as a good leaving group, as shown here, because this is exactly what happens. So overall, addition followed by elimination, which we've seen in other contexts before, and gives us substitution overall. Nucleophilic acyl substitution to be precise, which is the key mode of reaction for acid chlorides, anhydrides, esters, amides, etc. In this example, hydroxide is the nucleophile and it's substituted for chloride. But the nucleophile might be water, it might be ammonia, it might be methanol or methoxide, or something else again. And the electrophile could be the acid chloride as shown here, or an ester, or an amide, or an anhydride. A range of different reactions, but one unifying mechanism helps us to understand all of them. Before we close, we should consider the relative reactivity of these systems. We have shown throughout that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic and therefore reacts with nucleophiles. But which carbonyls are most electrophilic? Well, it turns out that the carbonyl group of acid chlorides and anhydrides are the most electrophilic because the extra electron withdrawing group attached to the carbonyl carbon pulls even more electron density away from that carbon making it even more attractive to incoming nucleophiles. Remember how electronegative chlorine is. The aldehyde and then the ketone are the next most reactive, followed by the ester and the amide. Aldehydes are generally more reactive than ketones, partly for steric reasons. It's just easier for a nucleophile to approach an aldehyde with only a hydrogen atom to get past on one side, and partly for electronic reasons. Remember that an alkyl group is considered electron donating. Think of toluene in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, or the greater stability of tert-butyl carbocations. The ester and the amide are least reactive because oxygen, and even more so nitrogen, can donate electron density back towards the carbonyl carbon by resonance, reducing its positivity and therefore attractiveness to nucleophiles. There's one more thing for us to do before we leave this topic for now, which is to consider three other carbonyl containing functional groups that we need to be aware of as we move forward on our chemical adventures. These have some similarities to the ester and the amide in that there are oxygen and nitrogen atoms attached to the carbonyl carbon. The carbonate, the carbamate, which is also sometimes called a urethane, and the urea. Each of these functional groups has two heteroatoms, oxygen or nitrogen, directly attached to the carbonyl carbon. And you might like to think about how this will influence their relative reactivity with nucleophiles. More on these guys another time.
We'll come back to many of these themes in class, and as always, you can read further in the recommended text, Claydon et al., from the Oxford University Press.